in this bag is all the camera gear that I used for my landscape photography. Everything from my cameras to my tripod is in this bag. And in today's video, I wanna go through and talk about what is in my camera bag for landscape photography for the year 2023. So let's jump right in and talk about it. What's up y'all, so Project Photography, back with another video, and today, people, today. Last year, I made a what is in my camera bag for the year 2022, and since then, a lot has changed in my camera bag for landscape photography in particular. A few additions have been added, and a lot of subtractions have been made, and I'm really excited to share with you what is in this bag for this year. So, with that being said, let's jump right in and talk about the Shimoda Action X30. Now this is my landscape photography bag of choice. There's a lot of great things about this bag. First of all, it's extremely comfortable. And this is something that is so important for me in my landscape photography. When I'm going out on hiking, hiking like 10 miles plus, and I mean, you wanna have a bag that is really comfortable so you can go on those longer hikes, you can experience more of the world. And this bag has a few things going for it. First of all, the hip belt is extremely comfortable. It's really nice and large, sits right on your hip, and helps to support a lot of the weight that the camera bag puts on you. This hip belt does help to mitigate a lot of the strain that bags normally put on your shoulders. That in tandem with the low lifters that are on this bag helps to take a lot of that weight off of your shoulders, make it very comfortable. The shoulder straps that are on this bag are actually very comfortable. They're nice and large, and I feel like they provide a very nice stable platform in order for me to carry my bag. Another aspect I really love about this bag is the fact that it has back access. Now, if you're a landscape photographer, you know how important this is because when you have back access, you're able to put the camera on the ground with the back of the bag facing towards you. And from this area, you can actually access all of your gear at once. And this is so nice because when I'm changing out cameras, I don't wanna have to be sifting through my bag. I can just grab one camera, take the other out and so on. And the fact that I can have the front of the bag on the ground allows the shoulder straps to actually stay nice and clean. And in addition to all that, because this bag is really resistant to the elements, I don't fear putting this bag in the snow or on water or in the dirt because I know this bag can handle it. And that's something I love about this bag, the durability, the ruggedness of this bag just allows me to go anywhere and everywhere without having to feel like I have to take care of this bag and throw it around, rough it around without having to worry. And for me, the size of this bag is perfect. I don't need more than 30 liters. I know that there's a 50 liter option out there, but for what I carry, I don't think I need more than that. And you can always expand this bag to the 45 liter side of things with the top rolling compartment. So if you ever really did need more room, there is that option. But for me, 30 liters is more than enough. So yeah, guys, I really love this bag. I don't really see this changing all that much, but if Peak Design did come out with a photography bag for landscape photographers in particular, I would definitely t consider taking a look at that bag because I, I love Peak Design, I love what they do, but they don't have a bag like that. So this bag for me is my landscape photography bag of choice. So now let's jump right into the camera bodies that I'm using. So first of all, I upgraded from my original Z6 and then Z50 now to two Z6s. And the big reason for that is you want the pure full frame image quality. The images that I get out of this camera are absolutely insane and stunning. And having the same camera system when I'm actually going through landscape photography it makes it a lot easier in the editing process because I don't have to edit two different files they're both the exact same file and I get the same image quality so I know what I'm getting out of it and a big reason for having two camera bodies instead of just one is that when I'm out there shooting landscape photography in the elements I don't want to be switching lenses because let's just say I'm by an ocean if you expose your sensor to those elements you can have salt water get on your sensor and that's just not fun. No one wants to deal with that. And something that I love about having two Z6s is that I set up the bodies exactly the same. They're the exact same configuration in terms of the function buttons, in terms of what I've assigned each of the custom modes to. Everything about these cameras is the exact same. And this makes shooting on location a lot easier because now I don't have to worry about, okay, what's the settings I have to use for this camera and then this one. Another thing that I love is that I can go down to ISO 50. And now if you've ever shot landscape photography, you understand how important dynamic range is, but also the fact that I'm able to drop my ISO down that low. And of course this is the extended range, but the fact that I'm able to drop my ISO that low allows me to just get longer shutter speeds. I can control the amount of light that is led into my sensor a lot better. And overall, just create better images, to be quite honest with you. Another aspect that I love about these cameras is that they're super lightweight and super compact. And for me, when I'm packing my camera gear in my bag for landscape photography, I want to make sure that it's as efficient, small, and compact as possible. And 
these cameras definitely do that. I don't feel like I'm carrying around this big bulky thing all the time, which allows me to honestly have the two camera setup that I originally have. Because if I have a lightweight setup, I don't have to worry about all that weight weighing me down if I carry a second body. This is pretty much a perfect counter for me. I really don't feel like much needs to be changed for landscape photography, and I'm very happy with it. I've been running with it for the past three, four years now, actually, and I'm extremely happy with the camera and the results that I get. So with that being said, let's jump right in and talk about the lenses, and this is where we see a little bit of a change. So first of all, let's talk about the 14 to 30. Now, this has been a staple wide-angle lens for me in my bag for gosh, I mean the past three years probably. It's the best wide angle I've ever used. Incredible, incredible edge to edge sharpness. And something that I love about this lens is that it's so compact and so small. Because it has a twisting lock mechanism, I can shrink it down even smaller than when it is in its 14 millimeter stage. And for me, I mean, this just makes my experience a lot better when shooting landscape photography and just packing my bag overall. So just to get back to the image quality, this lens is the sharpest lens I've ever used for landscape photography. It's incredible edge to edge. And when you're shooting with a 14 millimeter lens, you definitely need to worry about those edge distortion. But this lens has no problem with that. And I feel like the colors that I get out of this lens are absolutely pristine second to none. And on top of it, when was the last time you've seen a 14 millimeter lens with an 82 millimeter filter thread on it? I know the 14 to 24 does not have a filter thread that is this small and this accessible to so many people. For me, this is the perfect lens, the perfect wide angle lens for landscape photography. The 17 to 28 has its own purpose in using it for astrophotography in particular, but when it comes to like 99% of landscape shoots, I'm picking up this lens over any other. So now let's talk about the single biggest change that I made from my bag in 2022 to now. And it is the telephoto lens being a 24 to 200 f4 to 6.3. Something that I really love about this lens is that the 24 to 70 range is actually a lot more useful for landscape photography than I initially thought. Now this isn't a focal range that I would carry around specifically in my bag for landscape photography. I think this lens covers that range, but I am losing around 100 millimeters on the long end. And now how has that experience been for me in this past year? For me personally, I have actually not minded it as much. There are times that I do miss that extra 100 millimeters on the long end. But for the most part, I am actually just fine with it and I'm able to get the shots that I want. And I'll combine with the 14 to 30 and this lens, I'm able to cover all the way from 14 to 200 without any sort of gaps. And that really helps to create some amazing landscape images and get the exact shot that you want. On top of it, this lens is very sharp corner to corner and granted this is not an S line lens, but it definitely performs like a Nikon Z lens would. It does have a locking mechanism, so when I'm at 24 millimeters and packing this in my bag, don't have to worry about this lens moving around at all, which is fantastic. On top of it, it has a 67 millimeter filter thread, which allows me to essentially put a step up ring, which is an 82 to 67, to allow me to have my filters on this lens. Only thing I wish that this lens had was an AF MS switch and it does not have that unfortunately. I use that a lot when I'm switching between video and landscapes. Just doesn't have it. So it is what it is, but you know, something to be improved upon for the next model, hopefully. So let's talk about L brackets. Now this might sound like a boring topic, but L brackets are extremely important for landscape photography. And obviously last year I had one L bracket. Now I have two for both of my Z6s. This allows me to have my camera in vertical orientation as seamlessly as you can have it. I don't have to put my camera into horizontal, then tip it over and have that limited movement. I can create the compositions that I want without any sort of hassle. And honestly, it just makes life a lot easier. On top of that, this helps me to capture panoramas because now I have a lot more movement, a lot more range, and a lot more stability, to be honest, when I'm shooting this and creating the panoramas that I want. I think this is an incredible investment. I think anybody that's shooting landscape photography really should be using L brackets for their camera makes the experience a lot better and helps you create just better images overall. So with that being said, let's jump right in and talk about the tripod that I use. And now a lot of you guys know that I've been using the same Peak Design Aluminum Travel Tripod for the past couple years. I mean, when I first bought this tripod, it was in 2019 when the Kickstarter campaign was happening. I saw Peak Design was releasing a tripod and I thought, wow, it's probably pretty good. And to no surprise, it is pretty good. It's very lightweight, very compact, and that's something that I love about this tripod. It's extremely compact. I can fit it in my bag without having to worry about it taking up too much space. Something I love about this tripod is that the head itself is very easy to use. There's only one ring on it, 
and when I'm putting my camera on it, it's extremely fluid. And the fact that the tripod head fits so flush and so compactly in the tripod itself makes it just a joy to carry around. The only complaint that I really have about this, this uh, ball head is that when I've been using it for these past couple of years, over time, I feel like when I have the camera on the tripod and I move it around just slightly, it starts to loosen up. And I don't know if this is an issue with my tripod or other people have had that same issue, but it's definitely an issue. Another small complaint I have is that when I'm using this tripod and I'm turning the ring to tighten it, I really can't see how tight it is. I wish there was some sort of indicator, some sort of lines to let me know like, hey, when you're turning it this much is how tight it's gonna be and so on, because sometimes just by looking at the tripod, you can't tell if it's tightened or not. But overall, I've had very good experiences with this tripod. And the fact that I can actually take the legs apart and clean them out is big to me because I'm always beating up my gear. And when I'm going into the ocean and going to the mountains where there's lots of snow, lots of elements, they get in the legs. And I'm able to clean them out when I get home, which is huge for me taking care of my tripod. So now let's talk about filters. And filters is probably one of the most important tools that you're gonna have in your landscape kit. And for me, I have it, them all in an 82 millimeter filter pouch and I have four of them. I have three B plus W and D filters ranging from three stop to six stop to 10 stop. And then I have a KNF variable ND, which I use for video, which is a one to five stop. So let's break down each of these filters, talk about their specific use cases and the quality that comes with them. So first of all, the three stop ND filter is absolutely incredible. I'm using this mainly for those shorter exposures where I want to showcase a lot of movement in the frame while keeping the sky nice and isolated. I use this a lot on beach landscapes in particular. And this filter has really good image quality to be honest. I feel like the sharpness is not reduced at all. Extremely minimal vignetting, extremely minimal color cast to the point where it's not even existent. So this filter is a must have if you want to create those very short exposures. Now the six stop ND filter is a great in between filter for those three and those 10 stop filters because I'm mainly using this when the light is going down and I want to still capture those longer exposures of 30 seconds. Whereas if I'm using a 10 stop filter in that situation, we're going to have to capture close to three minute exposures. And sometimes when you're in a pinch and the light's going down really fast, you want to capture a lot of different images. You don't really want to be waiting three minutes for your image. So this filter has slightly more vignetting and color cast than the three stop, but to me, it's almost negligible. I feel like I still get great images out of it. And I don't feel like there's a lot of cleaning up to do in post-production. On top of that, sharpness is still just fine. And it's something I really want to note about these filters is that they all have incredible build quality. I've beaten the crap out of these filters and they still have stood the test of time without any real reduction in image quality. So great build quality if you're looking into that. But last of all is the 10 stop ND filter from B plus W. Now this is an incredible filter. I mean, for a 10 stop filter, I mean, we have to remember that 10 stops is a ton of light reduction. But with that being said, this filter allows me to capture those 30 second long exposures during the day. And if I wanna get those long exposures that are close to three, two minutes and up, this filter helps me to do that. But with that being said, the vignetting and the color cast are definitely prominent on this filter. It is something you have to worry about and clean up in post-production. But for me, I've gotten good at kind of cleaning it up after a while and it's something that you can definitely mitigate in post-production. And once you get the final image, you can't really tell that it was shot with an ND filter of that strength. Last but not least is the KNF one to five saw VND. Now this is actually a pretty good variable ND for the price that it's at. Now I use this a lot for my video. I don't really use this. I actually don't use it at all for my landscape photography, but this allows me to get that nice clean video with the stop down aperture, but also allows me to keep my 150th shutter speed when I'm actually shooting those monologues and even other sorts of B-roll. So next up, let's talk about the DJI mic that I have in this bag. And it's actually what I'm using right now to actually record audio for this video. Now, this is an incredible microphone actually. I love that it's so small, so compact. I don't really like to think about how much space is gonna take out my bag because it really just doesn't take out that much space. This is really important for me when I'm on the go and shooting bread and gun video. But the thing that I really don't mind about this, you know, setup is that I have to set it up every time I want to shoot video. And it's a little bit more of a tedious process versus something like a shotgun mic. And that's something that I just understand and know that is going to happen when you're using a setup like this. Overall, I honestly, if you're looking into a great audio system for recording video, I think this one is it for a lot of people out there. So if you're interested, go ahead and take a look. Next, I really just want to talk about this rocket blower that I have. I'm not sure what 
brand is from, but it's just a small rocket blower. Now this is important for me. When I'm shooting landscape photography, I see dust in the sensor. Just want to get it out real quick. There's not much to it. It's like 10 bucks on Amazon. I think everyone who's shooting landscapes or just into photography or have a camera in general should probably have one of these. Next up, the last bit I want to talk about is the GoPro Hero 9. Now this is a pretty good little action camera. It was not that expensive. I mean, it's like 350 when I bought it. Now this is pretty much used strictly for POV stuff. I don't use it for anything else because I really have no other reason. So it's mainly just that it's waterproof. It can you know, go on all the elements and I don't have to worry about it getting damaged and all that. Only thing that I'm a little bit eh about is the UI. I feel like it's a little buggy. I feel like it could be improved and it's not the fastest thing on earth, not the most intuitive, but is what it is. It just gets the job done. So I don't really have that much to complain about. On top of it, I actually get pretty good video quality out of it. So I can't really complain about it. And I have the wind muffs on it so that I can you know, take out all the wind that's in these locations that I'm shooting at. And most of the time there is quite a bit of wind. That is essentially it for what is in my camera bag for the year 2023, you guys. I mean, this is essentially what I'm be using and I don't really foresee it changing all that much to be honest, because I just feel like this kit is so solid, so stable and does everything that I need to do. All the pieces in the camera kit work seamlessly together. I don't feel like there's anything that I'm really missing to make my landscape photography experience better. I'm excited to go out and shoot more landscape photography. Got some incredible places I want to go shoot at, like Yosemite would be a great one, or even Zion. I gotta plan some trips, so we'll see what is in the bag for this year. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for experiencing the world with me today. And if you enjoy the content, please feel free to rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.